Hi, I'm Lisa Prather, and welcome to The Voice of Health with our host, Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where lives are changed every day through the natural approach to health care. Well, today we're going to talk about a very important organ, liver. Liver. <laughs> <laughs> the workhorse, what do we call it? The workhorse of the body. The workhorse of the body. And there's a good reason for that. Well, why, why call it the workhorse of the body? Uh, it, it actually supports every other organ and function of the body. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's the chemical factory of the body. Mm. In other words, it, it uh, makes, in, in other words, if you have to make something, uh, the liver is probably the thing that's going to make it. Mm. And if you need to break something down, the liver is probably going to do that. Interesting. You have a picture here that I'm looking at of the liver. I didn't realize it was that huge. <laughs> <laughs> it is the largest organ in the body. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it it, uh, um, it actually uh, is uh, weighs about three to sometimes almost four pounds. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a very, very important type of organ. As a matter of fact, it's one of the few organs that can actually regenerate itself. Wow. You can actually uh, remove 75% of the liver, and uh, it actually will grow back to its original size. Hmm. Uh, yeah, interesting. So what, what is the liver's function? Well, the liver, uh, as, uh, from what we know, and there might be things that we don't even know about, but it has about 500 different chemical functions in the body. Hmm. So we're not going to get into every single one because i don't want to bore the entire right uh, audience <laughs> but uh there are so many different things that uh the liver is involved with it it uh, makes most of the proteins of the body uh it will actually make quite a few hormones uh, it actually breaks down uh the hormones uh it's involved with uh, uh, uh carbohydrate uh, metabolism uh, it's involved with the immune system it's important for the nervous system uh, it helps to regulate blood pressure. It uh, actually is sort of the sieve of the body. Mm-hmm. Um, your body will actually, uh, from the hepatic vein, will take all the uh, blood that uh, comes from the digestive system and will actually filter it right through the liver. Hmm. So it, it's just a, a, an ongoing type of, of uh, aspect of, uh, of the body. One of the things is that uh, the liver, it, one of the things that we talk about is cholesterol. Everybody's concerned about cholesterol. So let's just take one aspect of the liver because there's so many different types of things. Uh, just one of its functions I could spend the entire hour on mm. discussing, mm. which I would probably put most people to sleep, right. but uh, <laughs> we, can, we can get into that. But uh, cholesterol. Everybody's interested in cholesterol, and one of the things that we always say is that instead of going in there and uh, lowering your cholesterol artificially, uh, look for the underlying cause. Matter of fact, what the cholesterol medicine, the majority of the cholesterol medicine actually does, is make your liver sick so the liver can't produce the cholesterol, Mm. because your liver actually makes the cholesterol. Interesting. And one of the things that will occur is if you have a sick liver, uh, that is one of the that is the number one reason for cholesterol to go high. Hmm. And when you say sick liver, what do you mean? Well, it's not functioning properly. Mm-hmm. The liver has so many different types of uh, of things that it's doing that it, it it it's just a like I said a workhorse of the body, and if you overtax it. Uh, like anything, it can actually get to a point where it's not working properly. And it can be uh, something that it can become inflamed, which we call hepatitis, uh, or it can actually be underfunctioning. And either way, then the uh, liver isn't working up to par. So having a good, clean, healthy functioning liver uh, is one of the major ways that you can actually get your cholesterol balanced. Well, what system is your liver associated with? Well, it's actually classified in with the digestive system because the liver actually makes something called bile, and that bile will actually go into the digestive system. And uh, it's very important to emulsify the fats, to break those down so they're actually absorbable into the body. And it's also very important to be able to get your 
um, fatty vitamins, mm -hmm. uh, fat soluble vitamins to be able to absorb. So, if that's not working properly, then you don't have proper digestion. That's one of the things that we check on uh, as we actually evaluate the liver to make sure that that's actually happening. Mm. So what symptoms occur if your liver isn't functioning properly? Well, the liver, if it's not functioning properly, uh, if, if it's real bad, you can start to get something called jaundice. Mm -hmm. uh, but you Yellow know, skin. Yeah, that yeah. yellow skin. You can have some nausea. Uh, if the liver's not functioning properly, you can have some easy bruising. Because the liver, one of its function is to make sure that the uh, uh, platelet cells are actually functioning correctly. So it's very involved with a uh, bruising of the body. But there's also a lot of more subtle types of things. Mm -hmm. uh, hot flashes. One of the most common ways that we can actually fix women's hot flashes is by uh, getting their liver functioning properly. Because so we say, who turned up the furnace? <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend has that joke. Who just turned up the furnace? <laughs> like one of the herbs that we use for women in hot flashes uh, is Dong Kwai. Uh, it's a Chinese herb, and it's been known for uh, thousands of years to actually help women uh, to regulate their hormones. But it's not actually a hormone herb. What it is, it's a uh, liver cleanser. Mm. And one of the things that the, let's say that your hormones are off a little bit. and Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> and the liver has a very interesting function. It can actually make almost every, any hormone in the body in small amounts. And then it also breaks down the hormones. So if you are not quite regulating correctly, and when things aren't regulated correctly, one, it affects your emotions. It also affects uh, your cycles. You can have uh, PMS and all those types of things and hot flashes. And in other words, things aren't being a working quite right. And if your hormones aren't quite right, especially for a female, uh, if you actually get the liver cleared out, the liver can actually take care of that because it will actually break down any hormones that are a little bit too high. Mm -hmm. And it can actually add a little bit just to kind of tweak things. So it's sort of a very nice regulator in, in the hormonal system. Uh, one of the things that we find uh, with people who have a low libido is that if we actually get their liver functioning correctly, all of a sudden that pops up. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason is is that the body is now being getting those subtle regulations because it is a very, very uh, subtle difference mm -hmm. on what is when things are working right and when things aren't working right. I mean, it sounds like a very important organ that <laughs> it's a controls a lot of things. Yeah, and it, there isn't anything that isn't affected by the liver. Mm -hmm. It's also a major storage area of um, of the uh, uh, nutritions. Uh, it stores our iron. It, it carries a supply of that, uh, copper, uh, vitamin A. Uh, in other words, it's a great storage area, too. Mm -hmm. So the body uses it to regulate a tremendous amount of your whole system. Now, do you treat the liver? Yes, uh, absolutely critical that uh, that's treated. And one of the nice things is that it is the major uh, organ of homeostasis. Hmm. And one of the things... That's that, what we're all about. That's what we're all about. The body is, uh, is very much uh, into balance. And there is a perfect balance as the body will uh, function the best. And when you are in perfect homeostasis, that is the definition of health. And the liver is absolutely critical for homeostasis. As a matter of fact, uh, another term that we could call it is the uh, homeostasis organ of the body. Ooh, the Be homeostasis organ of the body. Because that's basically mm. what it's doing. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, Did you just think of that? Yeah, actually, I did. Because <laughs> as I was thinking of all the different types of functions and the 500 different types of major types of, of areas that it actually works with, it, you know, it affects the immune system, it affects the hormones, it affects the digestive system, helps to regulate that. Uh, your blood pressure is actually very dependent upon that. 
uh, carbohydrate metabolism, um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, uh, a major organ that's involved with that, uh, is, your, is your liver. Mm-hmm. So, you know, one thing after another as you're looking at it, and it, it will make the chemicals, it will break down the chemicals. So if you have too much of something, uh, the liver will break it down. Mm-hmm. If you have too little, the liver uh, actually has the capability of probably making it. And uh, so much of the blood actually goes through there that it, it, it basically is constantly checking to see what is happening in the body and ha- what needs to be kind of shifted, that the body's not working right. So mm-hmm. it, it's a very, very important type of organ and extremely important for each individual to make sure that it's actually functioning correctly. I know it's very, uh, when you look at, you know, immediately in someone's care. I'm always looking at that to make sure that that's uh, working up to par, because if it's not, that needs to be fixed. And and uh, that is one thing that uh, actually we find that there uh, probably isn't anybody that couldn't use their liver fixed a little bit. Mm-hmm. Because there are, uh, everybody's liver is under stress. You can win a free 60-minute massage in a relaxing spa at the Prather Practice. Each month, we have a drawing to give away a free massage to one of our lucky Facebook and Twitter fans. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. Dr. Prather, how common is infertility? The official numbers are about 10% of the population has been diagnosed with infertility problems. Mm, that'd be women. Actually, it's, it's about 50-50. Oh, when you're talking about uh, infertility issues, it's not just a woman's problem, but it's also a man's problem, too. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, it is actually a growing problem. It's mm-hmm. getting worse. What role does structure function care play in treating infertility? Most people think about the medical intervention, mm-hmm. uh, IVF treatments, uh, but really, as you're looking at, the first step should be just trying to get healthy. You know, approaching this from a standpoint of things aren't working right, uh, what's not working right, and then uh, getting it functioning properly. The healthier you are, the more likely you are to get pregnant. That's mm-hmm. just just the way it works. Is the Prather practice successful in treating infertility? Yes, and, and uh, one of the things is we, we have quite a few uh, couples who come in for infertility problems, and we have an extremely high success rate. As we look at the percentage of, of uh, you know, who I kind of consider was our infertility patients, most of them that we kind of consider had already been through medical intervention trying to get pregnant and were mm. unsuccessful. And uh, we have about uh, between an 80 and 90 percent success rate, even with those men and women. That have already been through the have medical. have already tried the medical and was unsuccessful. Interesting. It's amazing, again if you get the body healthy, how successful that is. And the medical intervention is so costly. Yes, it's extremely costly, but if you've been through it, oftentimes we need to uh, really repair a lot of damage because it's it's really, really hard on the body. Mm -hmm. You you know, it's not a a pleasant experience at all. Uh, Very emotional, uh, very expensive, and uh, really, really just uh, uh, wears out. And uh, there's been uh, quite a few women who I don't even care about getting pregnant right now. I just want to, you know, my hormones are all a mess. Uh, you know, I've lost weight. I've, uh, there's all sorts of different things that are going on. We, when we do their blood work, you know, there's kidney damage, liver damage, uh, you know, that has actually occurred through it. Mm-hmm. And so we get them healthy, and as we're getting them healthy, all of a sudden they get pregnant too. So mm-hmm. it's a very rewarding type of thing. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. I 
You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. And we're going to talk about how to feel good with a, a good liver. Excellent. We're talking about the liver today, the workhorse of the body. You also came up with an, the organ of, of homeostasis. homeostasis. Yeah. Probably, um, you know, I, I never realized how important the liver is. And I know um, even this week, we had a patient we were doing some treatments on. Mm-hmm. And we talk about detoxing the liver. We do it very gently, by the way. You have to be very careful when you detox the liver. And we're going to talk about that. Sure. Um, but, but she said, well, why do we have to detox my liver? I'm not an alcoholic. or Sure. Um, you know, and that was an interesting comment that someone would think, you know, their liver... Um, is congested or diseased, mm-hmm. you know, only if they've abused it Certainly. that much. But. And, and one of the things is, you're talking about quite a few different things that are involved with abuse of the liver. The liver will process any type of a poison that, that comes into the system. That's actually one of its main jobs. That's why it's involved with uh, handling alcohol. Uh, alcohol going into the system, if you don't have a proper functioning liver, uh, is a huge problem. So the body actually, the liver is actually essential to be able to process that. So uh, some people are actually more prone to becoming alcoholics because their liver isn't functioning correctly. Mm -hmm. So, but that's only one of the toxins that it will actually process yeah i mean and that's what i was telling her there's so many toxins in our environment of course and the way we eat uh pharmaceuticals are very well known to be a toxic uh, uh problem for the liver i mean i have many patients whose whose liver has been damaged from taking a pharmaceutical mm-hmm. and even mild ones can be a um uh, a huge problem. Uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory uh, drugs are, are a huge problem for the liver. Mm-hmm. Uh, very well documented to cause uh, damage. So, anytime you're taking a pharmaceutical, uh, you're talking about uh, stress on the liver. But even taking in our foods, uh, our foods have a lot of chemicals in there that uh, the body uh, isn't really adapted to uh, utilize. Mm-hmm. And so, the body, uh, the liver actually has to take care of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, stress uh, is actually a toxin oh, in the that, body. Was that five letter word? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, stress actually produces a lot of toxins in our system, and the liver has to handle that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if we uh, abuse it or get out of uh, out of line on anything, then the then the liver has to work harder. So, how many people, um, you know, coming through your doors? Um, you know, do you find need treatment for their liver? Um, close to 100%. <laughs> so almost everybody. <laughs> Pretty much almost everybody needs some help with their liver. I mean, mm-hmm. one of the things that I'm constantly doing is uh, the liver is sort of, for me, my bellwether um, marker on, on how I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So I can actually palpate my liver and uh, feel, you know, whether it's it's a little bit swollen, a little tender. Uh, one of the things that I do on our exam is I check people's liver. Mm-hmm. And uh, the vast majority of people actually have tenderness in there. The, and is it on the right or left side? It, it's over on the right side. Okay. Interesting. And there's a, it, it, it kind of runs right, you know, sort of like a little triangle right in through there is where you can find it. Mm-hmm. And it, it's right underneath the uh, the breast area, okay, and then right down onto the uh, down to the end of the uh, the rib cage. Over so you there. can palpate, find out if it's inflamed or. Uh, I usually I can as we initially uh, check it. I can pretty well determine just from examination at what level that liver is toxic. Mm-hmm. And one of the things as we work with people is that they feel uh, a lot different. Um, one of the most common uh, reasons for fatigue is actually a congested liver. Hmm. So, you know, I'm tired, I'm run down, because it's working over time, and, and I feel kind of nauseated, and I feel sluggish. Uh, mm-hmm. Fatigue, slug, and nausea. 
mm-hmm. are kind <laughs> <Slug>. of <laughs> are kind of your your liver indicators. Kind of, that's what the liver looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you're very fascinated looking at that liver. Uh-huh. <laughs> Didn't know it was so huge. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's a uh, uh, as we can get that uh, detoxified, people really feel. Uh, a much more aliveness. Uh, they can think clearer. Mm-hmm. You know, that sluggishness is gone. The fatigue is gone. Uh, the nausea actually goes away. And uh, they, they just feel ch- uh, more chipper. and, and uh, Well, is there an more. emotion that goes along with a congested liver? Well, the, <laughs> interestingly enough, th- there are, uh, you know, both positive and negative. But uh, the uh, uh, in Hebrew, the, the Talmud put the... Uh, the liver in with the emotion of anger. Hmm. And one of the things that is very interesting is that, uh, you know, people who actually have sort of a, an, an inflamed liver uh, can get angry easy, easier. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we find is as we detox the liver, that that anger kind of dissipates. Yeah, they become nicer. Uh, people <laughs> actually become much oh, you, nicer. Yeah, I mean, we, we see, see that the ch- in the office. Uh huh. You know, they're, and it, it's it's not you know any fault of their own. Um, well, in know, other words, there's an influence on it, right? Right. There, there is an influence. Something you, physiological going on. Well, one of the things is that the liver is very much involved with the tension in the. the there's a hormone that determines the tension of your nerves. And the liver is very much involved in that. Hmm. So there is a very direct correlation between the nervous system and basically how tense you are mm-hmm. and your liver. So if you want to kind of relax, chill, then your liver needs to be taken care of. Uh, all those wives out there are going to send in their husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, who should be checked for their liver? I mean, you're saying most people coming in have some type of liver toxicity, correct? Or congested I, liver. When we say congested liver, we use that. Term. Well, it's it's the liver's not functioning up to par, and we can tell that from the blood test. Mm-hmm. You know that uh, the liver's not really functioning as it should. Uh, there is a, um, a a perfect homeostasis of the body, and you can actually pick that up on the blood tests. So high or low, neither one is actually works well. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, uh, yeah, we are taking in far more toxins than what our ancestors did. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a lot more chemicals into our system. Uh, there is a, a tremendous amount of overload on that. So, you know, basically everybody's kind of suffering from uh, their liver's working overtime. Mm-hmm. And everyone should be checked on their liver at least once a year. Of course, everyone should have a thorough uh, lab test, a thorough physical on a yearly basis. That is something that is required. And the liver needs to be thoroughly checked out, and and that's easy to do with a blood test. It's a yeah. Very let's talk about things. what um, what diagnostics are done for the liver. You're talking about um, blood work. There is, uh, and there's there's. As a matter of fact, as we do uh, our blood work, there is a liver panel that we do. Mm-hmm. I won't go into all the long terms that are associated with that. Mm-hmm. Again, that would be very boring for everyone. But uh, there is a liver panel that you should have checked just to see how that's that's doing. Uh, a great way to look at that. Uh, the other thing is that we have a uh, GI FX uh, stool kit now, and that can actually measure is the bile actually getting into the uh, digestive tract. Mm-hmm. And uh, if that is off, then we need to figure out how to actually open up the uh, bile ducts uh, so that the bile can actually start to get into the digestive system because you're not going to have a normal digestive system. We're not talking about surgery here. No, no, no. That's, that, <laughs> how to open those bile ducts. Right, right. It, <laughs> there, are, there are supplements that you actually take mm-hmm. along those lines that uh, have actually been around, uh, treatments for that have been around for thousands of years. Very safe, very gentle to the body. Uh, a lot of people talk about, oh, I'm going to do a liver detox. And they have these really wild, crazy types of things that they found on the Internet. And uh, actually, I've had people come in with very damaged livers from those. I do not recommend those. 
Uh, there are very mild, gentle ways of actually detoxing the liver that are extremely, extremely safe. It's not necessary to, to do those crazy things. And usually they cause more harm than good. Yeah, because what, what I tell people, we are detoxing the liver very gently. Very gently. Mm-hmm. And, and very safely, that's the other thing. Mm-hmm. And we can actually recheck on the lab tests and see that. But one of the things is that uh, for constipation, uh, you know, we have a lot of people come in, I'm chronically constipated, and constipation is actually dangerous. It can actually produce a, uh, a chemicals that can lead to cancer and cardiovascular disease. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that is not something that you should be taking lightly. Uh, and if you do have constipation, one of the things to do is look to the liver because the, the bile may not be flowing properly into the digestive tract. And it's very important to have that bile in the digestive tract. And one of the most important ways to keep the, uh, the uh, uh, constipation from occurring is making sure that sense. that occurs. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we can recheck it later and we can see that that's actually mm-hmm. flowing and their constipation is taken care of. And oftentimes as we start the supplement, we have an immediate changes along those lines. And mm-hmm. I've had people who've told me, uh, I was born with constipation <laughs> and these people are 65 mm-hmm. and I've never been able to go to the bathroom basically on their own. And I said, well, you know, we need to fix that because that's, you know, obviously that's throwing off your whole homeostasis and, and everything. And they said, well, I'm just miserable. Oh, yeah. And we uh, found out that it was basically that uh, there was a sludge through the bowel. And as soon as we got that opened up, guess what? Normal bowels. And they felt wonderful. They couldn't believe it. Sludge. Sludge. <laughs> All right, when we come back, let's talk about who is most susceptible to liver problems. Listen to the Voice of Health Radio on your smartphone or tablet on all of the top radio apps available. Tune in Radio, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. You can find these apps and more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is the Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Laughter is the best medicine. You know, I went in to get one of them... uh proctology deals. My doctor was supposed to be the best there was. You know, he'd won four or five gold gloves here a few years ago. Really? So he was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. I mean, he got... Ah! Yeah. Oh, I, didn't know if, I didn't know if he was checking for polyps or trying to extract a confession from me, for God's sake. We didn't... You know you had a bad one when you get your bill in the mail and one of the items listed is one men's dress watch. Oh, uh, <laughs> then he says, uh, you want to do the colonoscopy? And I'm like, what is that? And he said, we're going to run a camera up your hind end. <laughs> if there's a camera involved, I want Ben Affleck directing that. Right. All right. 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 You know what I mean? A special message from the DTS Weight Loss Center at the Prather Practice. Are you tired of making the same weight loss resolution only to end up right back where you started? Let the professionals at DTS Weight Loss Center take all the frustration out of dieting. Our nutritionists and wellness coaches know what works for every body type and can develop a plan specific to your needs throughout your medically supervised program. Make the change by visiting us online at DTSWeightLossCenter.com. Dedicate. Transform. Succeed. When you call the Prather Practice to schedule your appointment at our DTS Weight Loss Center, mention the Voice of Health radio show and you'll receive a free initial consultation plus a free body composition analysis. 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. The DTS Weight Loss Center at the Prather Practice. Dedicate, transform, succeed. Doctor, doctor, give me the news I got out. I'm Lisa Prather, and you're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where we get to the root cause of your health issue. And this week, we were talking about the liver, and um, we're calling it the workhorse of the body, um, the organ of homeostasis, a very important, very important organ. Um, Well, let's talk, Dr. Prather, about who is most susceptible to liver problems. Well, anyone who actually is taking any type of pharmaceuticals, if you're drinking too much alcohol, uh, that would create a, uh, a very definite susceptibility. Uh, poor diet, 
uh, makes you more susceptible to uh, liver problems. Um, if you actually have a, also a family history of problems along those lines, and certain people also have certain uh, genetic uh, tendencies along those lines. So, you know, looking at all those things, uh, well, one of the things, of course, you need to be aware of is if you are a um, young bodybuilder. I've had a lot of guys who've come in uh, who are very big into getting those big, huge muscles. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of the things that they are taking uh, to actually accomplish that, I mean, not even, uh, a lot of even just the natural products. And you're not, yeah, you're not talking I mean, about just steroids. Uh, the steroids are huge stress upon the liver. Mm -hmm. uh, but even a lot of the different types of uh, what they would consider natural uh, types of products can put a tremendous stress on the liver. So uh, they are really susceptible along those lines. Um, uh, athletes uh, who put a lot of stress, anyone who puts stress on their body through chemicals, things that they're taking, overworking, or even people who are just stressed from their work. Right, because you said most people walking in your doors have some type of you know, problem you see in their blood work with the liver. Yes, absolutely. It, yeah, I think it would it's be just living in this world, huh? Yes, it, it's actually. We've had a few people. It's like, wow, your liver's working great, and that's like once a year, mm -hmm. <laughs> one patient <laughs> that comes in, right? Yeah, that's actually initially. that's actually uh, doing well with their liver. So it, it's something that uh, I know myself that I've I've really had to uh, be aware of. Uh, one of the things that I had was a thyroid problem. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, the thyroid and the liver are very closely um, uh, matched up. Mm -hmm. So people who have uh, poor functioning thyroids uh, always have their liver as a problem. And with my uh, Graves' disease, my, my liver was uh, extremely tender. Uh, that was one thing that I was aware of. And uh, it actually took a while afterwards, even after my thyroid was functioning properly, for my liver actually to calm down. Mm. So uh, becoming aware of it as a doctor has actually helped me in, in then uh, treating it. Uh, we've seen, I've seen very, very good results with that. Well, let's talk about treatment, you know. What are the medical treatments for um, the liver, and then what treatments um, do you do? Well, one of the things is that pharmaceuticals, uh, by their very nature, are classified as a poison. So they always, uh, pharmaceuticals always put stress on the liver. Uh, even those drugs that uh, might be for uh, uh, for the liver, uh, for different types of uh, infections, viruses, uh, they are uh, usually hard on the liver. So pharmaceutically, it's a very difficult thing to actually treat. Uh, they do have, uh, for short term, uh, for severe liver problems, they do have some artificial filtration systems. Mm -hmm. uh, just like they do for dialysis for the kidneys, they have that for the liver. And then uh, liver transplants is basically, uh, for severe livers, uh, the best uh, form of treatment. Uh, so medically, that's not something that, um, you know, it, it really is their forte. Mm -hmm. So, you know, looking at it in a, in a more structure function type of method is really the best way to approach any type of a, of a liver condition. Well, let's talk about the structure function, and that's um, what we do. So how do you, you do blood work and find that someone's liver is off or the GI effects? Sure. Um, that's the, the comprehensive stool kit. Um, what do you do for treatment? Well, there are some very standard types of things uh, for the liver. Of course, you have to look at the nutritional needs. The liver is one of the big storage areas for, uh, for our nutrition. Uh, it will actually store our iron, our copper, our um, fatty uh, acids, vitamin D, uh, vitamin A. Uh, it will actually store those things and actually keep a, a very large supply of those things in our liver. And those are the fat-soluble vitamins. Fat-soluble vitamins. It's also in, uh, a good storage area for our B vitamins. So it, it actually will carry those things, and you can actually get too much of certain things. Uh, you know, if you get too much vitamin A, that, that can actually cause liver damage. If you have too much iron, 
uh, that actually creates a disease process, uh, will cause uh, non-functioning of the liver. That's something to look for. So actually achieving the nutritional balance in a homeostasis type of way. Uh, some of the ones that are uh, amino acid that uh, we always check on, though all the amino acids have, a, have an effect on that, but methionine uh, is a, a very, very good amino acid to get the liver functioning uh, correctly. Uh, B vitamins, choline, and inositol are uh, also very important ones that we would look at. Uh, B12, folic acid, B6 all have a very strong influence on the liver. A uh, good way to actually detox the liver is uh, vitamin C. Large amounts of vitamin C can actually have a very good effect on and the I liver. And I think the important thing, because these, um, you know, is there are a lot of, you know, in our inventory, a lot of vitamin Bs, vitamin Cs that we have. You know, sure. we don't just carry one and this is for everybody. Um, yeah, it, it has to be particular for each person. And one of the things we do is a very careful blood screening to find out exactly which uh, vitamins, minerals, uh, proteins uh, are going to be affecting that, and then we actually check to see what form of that will actually work the best for the body. We have something called electrodermal screening that we can check it beforehand, and that eliminates a lot of the the negative negative reactions of different types of products. So we can actually screen those things, see how they're going to actually respond on the body before we actually give them. Mm -hmm. which is extremely helpful. Uh, vitamin A is an um, uh, excellent type of way of actually working with the uh, liver. Um, we can do that in many different types of forms, though. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do it through a beta carotene. We can have several different forms of vitamin A that we can actually provide. And having the uh, expertise in that to actually determine which one will work the best is very important. Also, there are times that we have to detox. Uh, if you have too much iron in your system, uh, we have ways of actually pulling that out, and that can improve liver function. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have too much copper, uh, that actually accumulates in the liver and will stop the liver from actually functioning correctly. So looking at the balance of the vitamins and making sure that that's uh, properly balanced is, is very important. I know we had a patient this week... Um, a new patient, and um, she had too much too much iron because she had been doing her own supplementation. Sure, hadn't monitored it, sure. and ended up. You know, that's that's what's nice about what we do is we're um, we're doing the labs. Um, you have six hundred hours of just studying lab work, uh, so the expertise in that, and then we use the electrodermal screening not as a diagnostic tool, mm -hmm. but as a treatment tool um, to know specifically which supplements will um, bring them to homeostasis, Correct. put them in homeostasis. Well, we had one patient who uh, had been advised by a um, uh, another health doctor uh, to take iodine. And she'd been taking it for three years, and we checked her iodine level, and it was out the roof, and it was actually causing some liver problems. Mm. So we started the detoxification on the iodine and, and got that down. So it, it's uh, it, one of the best nutrients for the liver is liver. Mm -hmm. Calf's liver? Uh, yeah, uh, calf's liver, chicken liver, uh, whatever form of liver, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that you can uh, get on that. But uh, calf's liver My is one of the better ones. My mom made great liver. Yeah. i got to find that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, one of the things is um, uh, Worley, he was uh, the founder of Standard Process, which is a uh, probably one of the first uh, experts in nutrition, uh, said that he could feed the world in proper nutrition by just giving them uh, liver, uh, beets, and carrots. Mm. And each one of those he felt was that the liver had the key to health. And each one of those have a very strong effect on the liver. Uh, beets and beet tops are absolutely amazing foods for the liver. 
Uh, you, you know, uh, the bee tops are actually probably even better for the your bee system. Tops. Bee tops. Remember, mm-hmm. I've made a salad with bee tops. Mm-hmm. That was one of the better salads you've ever had. Mm-hmm. So it's a great. I grow way to up with do. beets. I, you know, but I like them. Yeah, and yeah. beets are a very, very good food. So uh, liver is as, absolutely wonderful, and that's one of the uh, we have concentrated. Because I, I sit there and tell people that you're going to need <laughs> to eat this much liver, and they're like, there, you know, there's no way. So I said, well, you can have a pill here. And you can get, with this pill, all the liver that you need on a weekly basis. Because that's concentrated food. Yeah, it's concentrated food. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have different ways that that's actually prepared. And uh, that will do wonders just by taking liver. Uh, beets are also wonderful and also in a lot of our supplements. Okay, when we come back, let's talk about other treatments that are helpful for the liver. Never miss an episode of The Voice of Health so that you can stay informed and empowered about your health. Get a podcast of our show automatically delivered to you every week by signing up for our show on iTunes. You can find that link on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. And don't forget, thevoiceofhealthradio.com has complete archives of all of our past episodes with an audio library of information to help you add more life to your years and more years to your life. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. One of the most basic fundamentals that uh, that I base my practice off of is something called the Atlas Orthogonal mm-hmm. uh, technique. It's the type of adjustment. It's a, it's a specific type of an adjustment, and orthogonal means at right angles. In other words, the, the head is sitting on top of your of your body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, because about 80% of the people don't have that. Mm-hmm. And it has a probably one of the greatest effects on the entire system. You're saying 80% of people don't have the right... The atlas sitting on, on underneath the uh, skull. Now uh, the atlas proper. we're talking about is the first vertebrae. First vertebrae under the occiput. So uh, a basic type of thing, and, and what I found is that that probably has the biggest effect on the health of an individual over anything else. Mm-hmm. So you can actually make the greatest amount of changes with the uh, with the atlas, getting it in the right position, because it's right there at the uh, base of the skull, which is the uh, center of the autonomic nervous system. Mm. The base uh, which, of the skull. Which actually controls all the functions of the body. So the atlas orthogonal is uh, the, one of the big bases of what we do and has the biggest effect on the health of the individual. And really to make any types of changes in the rest of the system to help the body to work correctly, uh, that's the beginning of where you need to start. And mm-hmm. when I'm actually working with patients, I make sure that that's in position. Now, of course, 20% of the people don't have a problem with that. Uh-huh. So we go on to So not everybody other. that walks in the office has that issue. And nobody, not everybody who walks into the office has that issue. But getting that corrected is absolutely essential to, for me to make the other postural changes and to make the changes in the system. And I want to um, bring up here, you're, you're board certified in the Atlas Orthogonal Technique, the only one in the state of Indiana. Um, got your training down in Atlanta. Um, right. So extensive training. I was one of the original six. Mm-hmm. in that so uh, that's a huge basis so th- there's a very strong belief system in that and then also I had my greatest amount of changes in my health through this particular type mm-hmm. of adjustment so uh, I can speak from a personal type of standpoint find out how the Atlas Orthogonal Chiropractic Adjustment can transform your health schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice 317-848-8048 that's 317-848-8048 or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, Restoring Hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. And this week, and we were talking about the liver, the workhorse of the body. We have the last segment. We want to talk about, um, we just started talking about the treatments and the nutritional needs. Um, anything there before we go on to more treatments for the liver? 
Um, and the structure function model is what we're talking about right now. Of course. Uh, uh, herbals, of course, are very important. You know, the nutritional needs are, are, are important. Uh, foods that are uh, extremely helpful are, of course, liver itself. Uh, the uh, the beets, beet tops, carrots, uh, with all the vitamin A in that, uh, all extremely good. And those are concentrated types of things that we actually use in our products. Uh, we have the um, the uh, types of vitamins and minerals that are, are uh, just that particular vitamin, but most commonly what we use is actually food-based uh, nutritionals, mm-hmm. where it's actually concentrated food. And instead of, I mean, people have oftentimes said to me, well, you know, I really don't want to take these, uh, these vitamins that you're giving me. Can't I just do it through the food? And I said, sure. And uh, so I write up a list of everything that they would need to take and how they would need to eat. And they look at it and they said, well, just give me those, those <laughs> pills there. I think uh-huh. I'll do it that way because it's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So, you know, concentrated foods is the main way that we actually approach it. There are times where people have problems with absorption and the food uh, type of nutritionals won't work so that we actually use uh, what's called orthomolecular vitamins, uh, which overwhelm the body and and actually force it to actually start to absorb so it can get up to par, that we can then switch to food-based type of nutrients, uh, which we prefer to use. But along with that, there's also herbal treatments. Uh, one of the most common types of herbs that people think about for the uh, liver is uh, milk thistle. Uh, we had already talked about the dong quai as something, but there are a whole host of different types. I love of, that name, dong quai. Yeah, I know. It is, it is neat. There's <laughs> like a whole, I should be in a martial art, art karate. <laughs> there's a whole host of uh, different types of herbs, which I won't get into all of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we actually use in combinations and in different types of means for different types of problems with the liver. So there's there's herbal types of means where we can get some detoxification and uh, are very, very helpful along those lines. There's nutritional type of work. But uh, along with that, uh, there are many other different types of ways of actually well, treating the liver. Well, let's talk about, I know we use a diathermy um, unit. We have sure. um, two units in our office. And how does that work for the liver? Well, uh, the diathermy is uh, uh, basically a, a big magnet. And what it does is it opens up the blood supply. As a matter of fact, we use it for anyone with circulatory problems to actually encourage uh, regeneration of the blood flow, which is extremely effective, uh, so that people don't have to have toes and, and uh, feet cut off. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really helps to regenerate that. But uh, it also, if you put it over the liver, it increases the blood supply. And as you increase the blood supply, then you increase the detoxification. So it really speeds up that process. And people with uh, congested livers or uh, inflamed livers, we can put it over there. And it makes a dramatic difference on how quickly those lab tests actually return to normal. Mm -hmm. So that we can detox the liver and people immediately feel better. Mm -hmm. Uh, There is a... um, a relaxation that goes along with it. And again, we're doing this very gently. It's a very gentle type of thing mm-hmm. and very natural type of type mm-hmm. of thing. It doesn't overforce the body to uh, to respond. Uh, it, matter of fact, one of the things that if with people with chronic sinus problems, if the liver is overwhelmed with their uh, uh, with the toxins, the body will actually then start to detox up in the sinuses and you start to get to produce a lot of mucus. Mm. So one of the things as we are clearing out people's sinuses that we also decongest the liver and use the diathermy for that. And oftentimes people can get up and say, wow, I can breathe. How is it that you're putting uh, a big magnet over my uh, uh, liver and all of a sudden I can breathe now. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a, de- it's a whole body decongestion and really removes a lot of the mucus through the system. So very excellent also yeah. for sinus problems too. Yeah. Well, let's talk um, about it. Well, I want to make sure that we cover all the treatments, any other treatments that you do. Acupuncture. Mm-hmm. is a very important type of a aspect uh, and can have uh, very strong effects on the, uh, the liver. Uh, we see uh, immediate changes along those lines, too. And matter of fact, people can be in a lot of pain with their liver, uh, do acupuncture, and it's pretty well relieved. Uh, the adjustments, uh, chiropractic, uh, the nerve supply to the, to the liver is very important that you actually uh, get that uh, 
uh, unimpinged mm-hmm. so that uh, the nerve supply is actually going well. Uh, certain types of muscles in, in vertebrae, if you actually have a toxic liver, it will actually cause, can cause a misalignment in the spine too. Mm. So there is actually what we call the liver pattern uh, in the spine. And you actually can see some changes on the structure on, on x-rays if you have chronic liver problems. Mm. So as you make the, those corrections, that affects the liver and then the liver affects the spine. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a very it's interesting. All holistic. It's holistic. It's all very connected. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what people appreciate about this this type of care, you know, that the liver's not all by itself, sure. you know, and you just focus, you know, on just that. You're focusing on the whole body. And how it all affects each other. Mm-hmm. And it's not just one treatment, you know. We can have two different people come in with congested livers, but their treatment might look, look different or their nutritional needs might look different. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about, you know, how does the liver affect cancer and cancer treatments? Well, one of the things that uh, in natural circles, as they are dealing with the liver, uh, detoxification of the liver is probably one of the big things that they always emphasize. And that's absolutely true. The, if you can keep the liver... Uh, functioning properly, your chances of cancer decrease quite dramatically. Because mm. one of the aspects that cancer has to have is an overabundance of toxins. Because toxins is one of the things that, that kicks off cancer. So if you can keep the liver uh, functioning cr- properly, uh, then your uh, toxic levels are way down. Mm. Uh, if you already have cancer, uh, one of the things that you can actually have a very, very good effect, and a matter of fact, The oncologists that we work with are always looking at the liver enzymes because, one, the the treatments for cancer always raise up the liver enzymes, but the liver enzymes is one of the biggest indicators on uh, the success of the treatment and the survivability of the patient. Mm, Interesting. So one of the things that we always need to do is to make sure that the liver is functioning while you have properly while you have cancer. And if you can do that, then your chances of, of surviving cancer is much, much higher. So uh, making sure that the liver is detoxifying, that it is working properly, is one of the keys for, first off, for prevention of cancer. Uh, two, it's uh, absolutely essential for uh, during the treatment of cancer that you keep that liver functioning properly and finding a good means of actually maintaining that without interfering with the medication that the oncologist will, would be giving you. And then after you have successfully treated the cancer, you need to keep that liver uh, nice and clean. One of the things I, I look at that is people who are trying to make sure there isn't a reoccurrence or that uh, the, uh, the five-year window is actually met is that uh, we're looking at their liver quite a bit and making sure that that's clean, and that's a very strong indicator of, uh, of how well they're actually going to do. Interesting. Well, so we've talked here about cancer and how it affects the liver. What about viruses? Well, uh, of course, one of the things that you are always thinking about and, and concerned about is the hepatitis A, B, and C. So when we find an inflamed liver... Uh, we uh, always uh, run those those checks for those viruses mm-hmm. to make sure that they're not there. And then, uh, as if you do have those, then the liver needs extra help, you know, mm-hmm. because uh, the liver is under uh, immediate st- uh, stress with that. So, you know, the rest of your life you're going to need to support that liver, and as long as you can keep that liver healthy, even though you have the virus, you're not going to have the effects of that particular virus. Interesting. So uh, the liver, again, is a major filtration of the body and can actually pick up uh, a lot of different types of infections. And if you can keep the liver healthy during that time, then that can actually help out. Mm -hmm. So uh, we always are looking to make sure that there isn't any infections in the liver. Uh, The other thing that we actually check on is to make sure that there isn't any parasites associated with the, the liver that could actually be going on. 
Uh, so we do thorough lab tests along those lines, and also the GI effects can actually show up if there's any parasitic problems. What about liver? You talked a little bit with cholesterol and blood pressure. Uh, yes, the um, the liver is seventy uh, percent of the time. Whenever you're talking about blood pressure problems, you're talking about the kidneys, but the rest of the time, uh, a lot of times you can actually be dealing with the uh, liver. So one of the things that we found is that if we have a toxic congested liver, uh, that we can actually have some blood pressure problems. So that would be one area that we could go th- to and actually fix uh, blood pressure, which we do on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing, of course, is cardiovascular disease. Mm-hmm. You know, the liver is actually very much associated with that. So keeping the liver actually clean along those lines can uh, make a very big difference with that. And then we talked about alcoholism. and Yes, uh, alcohol puts a p- tremendous pressure on the, uh, the liver. So, you know, making sure that you drink moderately uh, is an important type of uh, aspect on that. And if you do have a, um, uh, problems with alcohol, one of the important things that we have found is if you can detox the liver, get that functioning properly, then that will actually help you to keep your uh, commitment not to actually drink. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah if, if you have that toxin in there, then there actually increases some of the cravings. Mm-hmm. So if you can actually detox the liver, get that up to par, you feel better, uh, the cravings for the alcohol actually decrease. Yeah, uh, and uh, that that actually uh, will help you to uh, to actually uh, make those recoveries. I'm sure you've seen some great results once you get that, you know, liver kind of cleaned out. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, well, there there really isn't too much that that doesn't respond to that. Okay. Any closing remarks, Doctor Prather? We're out of time. Uh, make sure your liver works right. Love your liver. <laughs> Love your liver. <laughs> All right. <laughs> The Prather Practice is located at 8902 North Meridian Street on the north side of Indianapolis, just south of the I-465 loop. If we can help you to achieve better health, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with our office at 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Join us again here next week or anytime on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. For The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather.